Hello, everyone. Fallon and I are back for an interview on profiles and strengths. And we're going to talk today with Ellen, uh, highlighting women who lead, making a difference in our communities. We'll let um, Fallon give Ellen's full bio before we take off on the interview. But just make sure to follow us during Women's History Month. We're going to have several short interviews on these wonderful women that are making a difference in our communities. So thank you, Ellen, for joining us. Yes, yes. thank you so much again, Ellen, for your time. So I will do a short bio of Ellen, and then I'll let Ellen just kind of speak a little bit more about the work that she's doing in the community. Um, so Ellen is the Assistant Vice President of Trafficking and Violence Prevention at Nebraska Children's and Families Foundation. She is passionate about advocating for public policy and systems response to prevent deeper system involvement for children and families. She recognizes that the inherent strengths and expertise of survivors in communities do actually drive change. And with that, um, Ellen, she holds a bachelor's degree and a master's degree in social work. So again, thank you for all the work that you're doing, Ellen, with the women in our communities, their families, um, and thank you for being here with us. So if you could just tell us, a, again, that was just a little snippet of the work you're doing, a high level snippet of it. Um, we would love to hear a bit more about the work that you're doing with those survivors. Sure. Um, thank you so much for having me today. I'm really happy to be here. Um, and included in this project, I'm really passionate about um, supporting women and uplifting women. So this is a great space to be a part of. Um, so I think um, I fell into this work in the way that I think um, most people do. Maybe they start into a social work journey thinking that um, you'd be interested in um, I think a lot of social work profession is associated with mental health practice or clinical practice. Um, I always knew I was interested in um, the court process and the system involved young people, um, being sure their voice was at the center of that process. Um, and sort of early on in my social work education um, was partnered with a mentor who was working um, here in Nebraska at the Attorney General's office as a victim advocate. And um, really with her mentorship and partnership, she sort of led me into that field and I sort of never looked back. Um, I just really found uh, my passion for folks who are touched by this system um, by really no fault of their own, by um, not really having any awareness of how that process works. I mean, I think that is the, the piece of the criminal justice process that most of us never interact with it. And that's a good thing. Um, mm -hmm. So really finding ways and avenues to demystify it and humanize it for people um, really became my motivation in my professional work. Um, and so I spent several years at the attorney general's office as a victim advocate. Um, and traveled across the state, really working directly with survivors of crime. So everyone from really young children um, to older folks that had been victimized in various ways um, and had survived their crimes, helping them testify in court, um, go through that process was really my life for a long time, um, doing that direct advocacy work. Um, and then later I found myself working in public education and serving folks who were experiencing homelessness and young people um, who were going through that and also trying to get their education, trying to do what kids do every day and go to school and focus and learn um, while also just really not knowing where they were going to sleep night to night. Um, and that work was really sustained honestly, by lots of other women um, in the social work department who I worked with that made me show up every day and helped me also work on my own self-care and work on how to manage my caseload and referrals and connecting folks with the right resources. Um, but I was really still called to do the kind of criminal justice advocacy work and ended uh, back at the Attorney General's office, um, there was an opportunity to coordinate a new team there. Um, 
that examine domestic violence fatality. So that was uh, a huge undertaking, a huge project and more macro than the work that I had done previously. But I felt like I was really ready for that change, um, that kind of break from that direct crisis work. Um, and that's where I really felt I got to jump in with two feet, um, kind of backwards, upside down some days it felt, but um, that was really bringing groups together um, to look at these cases and examine them really closely in a way that our state hadn't done before. Um, and then shortly after that, NCFF came knocking on my door um, and it was an opportunity I thought really to continue that broader level system work um, and focus more on um, working with young people. Um, so 14 to about 24 is the group that we're trying to impact um, under an Office of Victims of Crime grant. So I manage that grant and then also help the communities that we serve better respond to the folks that are experiencing violence in their community. So 